Welcome to US News Source Channel. Black Sea Fleet of the Russian Navy took action. The largest Russian landing craft entered the Black Sea. This ship has sailed west. Russian submarines loaded with caliber cruise missiles entered the Black Sea en masse. Intensity of the operations in Donbass has increased. 25 Wagner Group Russian mercenaries neutralized in Donetsk. Russian tanks cannot withstand the attacks. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky and President of Estonia Alar Karas held the first phone call of the new year. While the operations in the air and on the land continue, signals have been given that the operations at sea can also begin. Tension is increasing day by day. Every move has become so much more important now. Naval operations can be launched at any time. Operations have continued non-stop since the beginning of the war. Unsuccessful in ground operations, the Russian army intensifies its airstrikes. As it is known, Russia has lost many of its soldiers and equipment due to the strategic mistakes it has made since the beginning of the war. This situation caused the Russian army to be insufficient in ground operations. The Russian troops, who were insufficient in ground operations, began to intensify their air attacks. However, air defense systems began to be sent to Ukraine right after. This nullified the attacks of the Russian forces and the ammunition used was completely wasted. Thereupon, Russia activated its military resources at sea and began to increase its attacks over the sea. These attacks were carried out from ships loaded with cruise missiles stationed on the sea. However, these ships now only come to the Black Sea when an attack will be made. Reason for this is that the Ukrainian soldiers had previously targeted the Russian navy on this sea. Since then, Russia has been diverting its ships to other seas as soon as it launches an attack. Another reason for this is that each of these cruise missiles is quite expensive. If these costly missiles are damaged, Russia will experience serious economic difficulties. For this reason, these missile-laden ships are kept away from possible attacks. Moreover, this time Russia brought one of the largest Russian landing craft to the western part of the Black Sea. It is stated that this Russian landing craft may pose a risk to the southern front. According to estimates, this ship is capable of landing troops in the south of Ukraine. Moreover, it is a very large ship. Appearance of the rather large Pyotr Morganov Russian landing craft is a possible indication that the troop landing plan could be implemented. Moreover, according to the reports, a large landing craft left the Novorossiysk region. It was also reported that three diesel-electric submarines carrying caliber cruise missiles were moving towards the Black Sea. Grouping of these diesel-electric submarines in the Black Sea is seen as a serious power. It may also be possible to carry out a rather unexpected attack on key points on Ukrainian territory, especially thanks to the ability to launch missiles underwater. Pyotr Morganov is reported to be the largest landing craft currently in Black Sea waters. It was also claimed that the ship was well-armed and was able to withstand attacks even with the use of Harpoon anti-ship cruise missiles, which had previously been transferred to the Ukrainian army, although it is not known exactly what might be on board. This ship poses a great risk to the territory of Ukraine. Moreover, the only Russian ship brought to the Black Sea is not limited to this. It was also reported that Russian submarines armed with caliber cruise missiles entered the Black Sea waters en masse. It is stated that these are Russian diesel-electric submarines. In the statements coming from Kiev, it was predicted that missile attacks could be launched against the territory of Ukraine in the period of 12 to 15 January. On top of that, the fact that half of the submarines of the Russian Navy's Black Sea fleet landed in the open waters of the Black Sea attracted a lot of attention. It may be possible at any moment to launch an operation over the sea. This situation increases the tension between the countries more and more. It was stated that they were advancing southwards from the Crimea. It is also thought that the submarines may have gone to the Ukrainian coast to attack Ukraine's military and energy infrastructure. According to the latest news, at least three submarines of the Russian Navy's Black Sea Fleet have left the Novorossiysk region for the Black Sea. At the moment, looking at the general situation, 
it is reported that three submarines of the Varshavyanka project and the large Russian landing craft Pyotr Morganov have left the Russian Navy base in Novorossiysk. I. T. is estimated that these submarines and the landing craft could move both towards the Ukrainian coast and towards the Russian Navy base in Sevastopol. However, it was stated that it is not possible to monitor the movement of Russian diesel-electric submarines and there is no official statement on this issue. But if the predictions come true, Russia could launch one of its last major missile strikes. As it is known, Russia has a very limited resource for large missile attacks due to its dwindling resources. This requires them to think more before launching an attack. Because if these attacks are blocked again, Russia's expensive missiles and important navy ships will be put at risk. This situation may increase the tension on the Moscow side considerably. On the other hand, operations are increasing in the east. As it is known, there are many industrial centers and logistics points on the eastern front. This situation increases the intensity of mutual conflicts. There are many critical points in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions of the eastern Don base. One of the most key areas in Donetsk is Balmut. As it is known, mutual attacks have been organized in this region for months. Moreover, this is the region where Russia suffered the heaviest losses. Despite all this, the offensive efforts on the front continue. Moreover, there are also Wagner Group Russian mercenaries in this region. This time it was announced that the Ukrainian defense forces neutralized several attack groups affiliated with the Wagner Special Military Group on the outskirts of this region. It was reported that throughout the day, assault groups consisting of Russian mercenaries made attempts to gain control over the strong points of the Ukrainian forces. But all attempts to attack by these Russian mercenaries were repelled by Ukrainian troops. Moreover, the Ukrainian troops stopped these Russian mercenaries by advancing with intense small arms and group fire, and neutralized 25 Russian mercenaries. It is known that these soldiers were actually sent to support the Russian army. However, the losses of these mercenaries also increased. He even had disagreements with Russian soldiers from time to time. This caused the Russian soldiers to make their job more difficult rather than easier. If this situation continues, conflicts will break out between the leader of the mercenaries and the leader of Russia. It was also reported that Russian tanks were destroyed by Ukrainian paratroopers near the Marinka region on this Donetsk front. According to the statements of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, the attacks of Russian troops in the region have been stopped by the Ukrainian forces for months. Moreover, it is known that Russia often lost its tanks in operations. These tanks, on the other hand, are either lost due to wrong moves and military inadequacies, or are lost when Ukrainian troops recapture the territories and seize the remaining military equipment. This situation significantly reduces the ground operation power of the Russian army. For these reasons, the losses increase and it becomes more difficult to compensate. On the other hand, it was reported that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and Estonian President Alar Karas made their first phone calls in the new year. Within the scope of the meeting, Alar Karas stated that the new year should be the year of Ukraine's victory and stated that Estonia will do everything in its power to contribute to this. Karas also called on Ukraine's partners to provide the necessary military assistance to defeat Russia. He also emphasized that this is important for the security of all European countries. In addition, Zelensky explained that they discussed the situation on the fronts, Ukraine's needs in the field of defense and further steps towards Euro-Atlantic integration with Karas. In these days when the violence of the war has increased considerably, relations between countries and the decisions made are of much greater importance. For this, the steps taken must now be determined in a much more strategic direction. We'll see what happens in the next few days. We have reached the end of another video. You can support us by liking the video. You can easily follow new videos by subscribing. I wish you all a war-free day. See you.